What's up, Ian Eddie fam? Today we're bringing you a bone-crushing lecture. You see what I did there? Discussing the Liz Frank fracture. This is definitely a fracture that is often missed, but not you, because you saw this lecture. Now picture this. A 20-year-old female with no past medical history presents to the emergency department with chief complaint of foot pain after a motor vehicle accident. The patient explains that she was the restrained driver of a vehicle traveling approximately 20 to 30 miles per hour when she was struck head on by another vehicle. Airbags did deploy. She further reports significant damage to the front of the vehicle. Currently in the ED, the patient endorses a sharp right-sided foot pain that easily increases to an eight out of 10 pain with applying pressure or bearing weight. You obtain x-rays of the foot, which are found to be negative by the radiologist. But then you remembered this lecture and decided to order a standing upright x-ray. And sure enough, there it stood, a Liz Frank injury. The patient has a Liz Frank injury. You are noted a hero and instead of discharging the patient with undiagnosed injury, which can cause post-traumatic mid-foot pain throughout the rest of the patient's entire life and foot deformity, you managed the patient appropriately and obtained orthopedic consultation. Well, let's briefly review some history behind this fracture. Now, Jackie's Liz Frank de Saint Martin encountered a soldier who suffered from vascular compromise and secondary gangrene of the foot after a fall from a horse. Subsequently, Liz Frank performed an amputation at the level of the tarsal metatarsal joint, and that area of the foot has since been referred to as the Liz Frank joint. Now, Liz Frank injuries are characterized by disruption between the articulation of the medial cuneiform and the base of the second metatarsal. Unifying factor is disruption of the tarsal metatarsal joint complex. Injuries can range from mild sprains to severe dislocations and may take form of purely ligamentous injury or fracture dislocations. Now, the common causes of the Liz Frank fracture include motor vehicle accidents, falls from heights, and athletic injuries. Now, the mechanism is usually caused by indirect rotational forces and axial load through hyperplantar flexed forefoot. Now this is an easily missed fracture and can result in progressive foot deformity, chronic pain, and dysfunction. A recent study showed that, in fact, the Liz Frank fracture was misdiagnosed in approximately 20% of cases. That's one in five patients. So the primary purpose of this lecture is to help you avoid ever missing a Liz Frank injury. Now history and physical exam play a big role in making the, di the diagnosis. Based on the mechanism of injury, a suspicion should be either lowered or raised. Patient symptoms will reveal severe pain, inability to bear weight, and on physical exam, there's evidence of medial plantar bruising, swelling throughout the midfoot, and tenderness over the tarsal metatarsal joint. There also can be a positive instability test. Now, you might ask, what is the tarsal metatarsal joint instability test? Well, when you grasp the metatarsal head, and apply dorsal force to the forefoot 
while the other hand palpates the darso tarso metatarso joint. Now, dorsal subluxation suggests instability and is concerning for Liz Frank fracture or injuries. If first and second metatarsos can be displaced medially and laterally, global instability is present and surgery is often required. Now, there are five radiographic findings of a Liz Frank injury. The first of which is discontinuity of a line drawn from the medial base of the second metatarsal to the medial side of the middle cuneiform. As you can see in the image to the left, there is no discontinuity of the line. However, it, taking a look at the image to the right, we see there's obvious discontinuity of that line, suggestive of a Liz Frank injury. The second radiographic finding of Liz Frank injuries are widening of the interval between the first and second metatarsal. Now the flex sign is bony fragment seen in the first intermetatarsal space, represents evulsion of Liz Frank ligament from the base of the second metatarsal, which is diagnostic of Liz Frank injury. We can see the flex sign in the image in the bottom right. The third radiographic finding of Liz Frank injuries is dorsal displacement of the proximal base of the first and second metatarsal. We could see it obviously in the top right image and very subtly in the bottom right image. And the final two radiographic findings of Liz Frank injuries are medial side of the base of the fourth metatarsal does not line up with the medial side of the cuboid. And disruption of the medial column line, which is the line tangential to the medial aspect of the navicular and the medial cuneiform. Now, management of Liz Frank injuries often depend on the severity of the injury itself. Now, in cases where there's no displacement on weight bearing and stress radiographs and no evidence of bony injury, oftentimes cast immobilization for eight weeks is indicated. However, in cases where there's any evidence of instability, meaning greater than two millimeter shift, and favored in bony fracture dislocation as opposed to purely ligamentous injuries, open reduction and rigid internal fixation is often required. So the next time that a patient presents to the emergency department with right foot pain and there's any suspicion of a Liz Frank injury, definitely get standing upright x-ray and you might just catch a Liz Frank fracture.